And so Gabrielle Way will be joining us from the UCLA lab, and she'll be talking about exciting developments with nitric oxide releasing nanoparticles, effectively present, preventing P acnes induced inflammation by both clearing the organism and inhibiting microbial stimulation of the innate immune response. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much, ARS, for inviting me today to talk. Um, it's a great honor to be able to talk about nitric oxide. So today I'm going to be talking about the effects of nitric oxide releasing nanoparticles on propionic bacterium acne-induced inflammation. So nitric oxide is a very interesting molecule. Um, in fact, it was so interesting that it was named 1992 Molecule of the Year. Um, as shown on the science slide, just say no. Um, and Nitric oxide is endogenously produced. It is short-lived, diatomic, lipophilic molecule. Um, it functions in the cell, such as cell cycle regulation, pro-anti-inflammatory properties, and antimicrobial activity. So nitric oxide has made significant contribution to the science and health. It is an exciting and extraordinary molecule, and is being developed for therapeutic uses in many health diseases, such as diabetes, chronic heart failure, chronic inflammatory diseases, stroke, and myocardial infarctions. As shown on the previous slide, um, nitric oxide has been developed in many uh, health diseases, such as the heart. And however, nitric oxide has not been studied and developed in the skin. And Nitric oxide is endogenously expressed in the skin. It is endogenously expressed by nitric oxide synthase, and it is found in different levels of the skin, such as keratinocytes, melanocytes, and fibroblasts. So given that nitric oxide is expressed in the skin endogenously, um, it makes for a very good, useful, potential therapeutic approach. And however, there are difficulties in delivering nitric oxide. Difficulties are that it is difficult to handle, it's difficult to control the delivery of specific local concentrations. Um, it also has a short half-life and diffuses very rapidly down its concentration gradient. So then, in a solution to this problem, we wanted to use nanoparticles as a solution. And nanoparticles is a carrier, it's a small object that behaves as a whole unit in terms of its transport and properties. And we can actually mix and match the different physical and chemical at a nanoscale um, to deliver uh, nanoparticles. And nanoparticles are also importantly used as a vehicle to deliver and localize specific concentrations of nitric oxide. So now we found a solution to our problem. So we synthesized nitric oxide nanoparticles as a solution to our problem to stabilize nitric oxide. And uh, we added in chylazon. Oh. We added in chylazon. TMOS, PEG, and of course nitric oxide. And we added this in a block. And the interesting thing is that upon aqueous exposure to, of this block, uh, the nanoparticle matrix opens up and releases nitric oxide out of its pores. So now we're able to effectively deliver this into the skin. So our main goal and hypothesis of this project was to determine NOMP's antimicrobial activity against P acnes and its immunomodulatory effect on the host's innate immune response. So going along with the first aim, uh, we wanted to test NOMP's antimicrobial activity against P. acnes. And we did this by increasing the we did this by increasing the dose of NOMP, and we saw a significant downregulation of P. acnes percent survival rate compared to the control of just nanoparticle carrier. So this told us that NOMP has a significant effect on P. acnes percent survival rate. And going along and testing the second aim, we wanted to test whether nitric oxide nanoparticles had an effect on the innate immune response. And we did this by testing four different cytokines. We tested it using IL-1 beta, TNF-alpha, IL-6, and IL-8. And we tested these four cytokines because they're very good markers for the innate immune response. So then what we did was then we induced the cells with P. acnes. And a when we increased the concentrations of NOMP, we saw significant downregulation of IL-1 beta, TNF-alpha, IL-6, and IL-8 compared to P-acne-induced cells with no NOMP. 
So this means that NLMP significantly inhibits pyactinase induced cytokines. So now that we know NOMP inhibits uh, pyactinase induced cytokines, we want to find out how it inhibits the cytokines. So then we tested this using I1 beta, and we, I1 beta is a good marker, and it's a very good um, cytokine to test the innate immune response. And there's different pathways that I1 beta secretion could go through. It could go through whether um, it's possible to go through toe like receptors and inflammasome pathway. And we knew from previous studies that I1 beta secretion goes through inflammasome pathway. So we decided to test um, NOMP's effect on I1 beta secretion through the inflammasome pathway. So what we did was that when we added in and transfected as NRP3 knockdown with P acnes, and with NOMP, we saw a significant downregulation compared to no NRP3 knockdown and with NOMP, as shown at this significant bar. And moving over to the red figure, we saw that when we induced with NRP3 transfection um, knockdown, we showed that in PACNE cells and with NOMP, we saw a significant downregulation compared to PACNE induced cells with no NOMP. So this told us that NOMP does inhibit I1 beta by directly downregulating I1 beta gene through the inflammasome pathway. And this is exciting because we know now that um, it downregulates through a certain pathway. So next, as I said in the previous slide, we know that, I1, uh, that NOMP downregulates I1 beta secretion through the inflammasome pathway. So now we want to find out how it downregulates I1 beta. And the inflammasome pathway is composed of three different components. It's composed of NRP3, caspase 1, and ASC. And we want to find out which specific component NOMP affects I1 beta secretion. So then we tested the three different components. Um, on the far left, we see caspase 1 expression, NRP3, ASC. And what was interesting about it was that when we tested caspase 1 expression, when we added induced the cells of P acnes and added in NOMP, we saw a significant downregulation of caspase 1 expression only and not ASC or NRP3 as the levels remain the same. And this is compared to our uh, control, which did not have any NOMP. So this means that NOMP does inhibit I1 beta secretion by downregulating caspase 1 gene and not ASC or NRP3. So we showed that NOMP does downregulate I1 beta expression through caspase 1 gene expression. However, we didn't, we want to find out whether it affected caspase 1 protein expression. And we did this using Western blot and activity assay. So on the left, we show the Western blot and we induce the cells with P acnes and add it in NOMP. And we saw a total shutdown of caspase 1 protein. However, when we did not add in NOMP and P acnes induced cells, we saw, we still saw a ban for caspase 1. And moving on to activity assay on panel B, when we induce the cells with P acnes and add it in NOMP, it has significant downregulation compared to no NOMP. So this told us that NOMP significantly downregulates P acnes induced caspase 1 protein expression and activity in PBMC cells. So the summary of the project was that NOMP decreased P acnes antimicrobial activity. It inhibits in pro-inflammatory secretion from P-acne stimulate P PBMC cells. And NOMP is also found to impact components of the NRP3 inflammasome pathway. And NOMP inhibits I1 beta secretion through downregulating caspase 1, but not ASC or NRP3. And lastly, all in all, our main project um, was that NOMP if effectively prevents P acnes induced inflammation by its antimicrobial activity and downregulation of the host immune innate response. I'd like to thank the Friedman Lab and uh, Jenny, uh, Dr. Jenny Kim's lab. Okay, thank you. Are there questions? Hello, uh, very interesting. I've never thought about uh, nitrous oxide and acne before. Um, I, I wonder if I can ask a very basic question, and nothing about nitric mm -hmm. oxide, really. Um, in the acne patient samples, would you expect the levels to be lower than in the rest of the skin? 
In the acne samples, uh, yes, for the cytokine secretions. No, levels of, you said to start with that there's endogenous nitric oxide in, in the epidermis and parts of the skin. Mm -hmm. So is it higher or lower or the same in acne skin? Uh, we haven't tested that, but I would expect it to be um, a little bit lower because P. acne does induce um, cytokine secretions. And normally with our data, we show that uh, nitric oxide does inhibit cytokine secretion. So then if the P. acne lesion is expressing cytokines, I would expect the nitric oxide levels to be a little bit lower. However, it is an interesting question to test. Thank, Thank you. you. I had, I had a question. Um, so by, so the, you have a decreased gene expression for the caspase one. So did you, and you had also a decreased protein expression. So were you able to tell from that data whether you were actually inhibiting inflammasome activation or that it might be working a, by a different way? Uh, we confirmed that it, it was inhibiting through the inflammasome pathway. So then caspase one is part of the inflammasome pathway, mm -hmm. as you probably know. Um, and it's by directly downregulating caspase one. And that's like the only component out of the three components in the inflammasome pathway. <coughs> so does that kind of answer the question? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you.